Hello everyone, today we have the newest patch in Marvel Snap, and it is uh, surely going to shake some things up. Now, not a lot of changes necessarily, but some really big, really impactful, uh, almost surprising ones. Wave got hit incredibly hard, um, a, an archetype that has been around since the beta days with Death Wave, uh, being able to cheat out extra cards like Death, being able to cheat out cards like She-Hulk, along with additional resources is no longer possible. The way that Wave interacts now doesn't doesn't take into account our discount before setting it to four. And so both of those are no longer going to be possible, which is insane. But as far as the rest of the updates go, there are some pretty good changes. But the biggest one for me is that Kitty Pride is now back and she is free. Kitty Pride is now a one cost, zero power card that when this returns to your hand, gain plus two power. And it has the caveat that it returns at the start of each turn. So before you could manually choose if you wanted to pull her in or not, which gave you some autonomy, some flexibility in how and where you wanted to position that power. If you wanted to leave her in a stormed location, you could. But now with the way that she functions, you can't do that. It's going to force her back into your hand. But at the same time, the update fixed her interaction with both Beast and Collector, which was a big deficit before because she wouldn't retain that reduction from Beast. She wouldn't buff up Collector unless you retained her in your hand for an additional turn. So now she works incredibly well with bounce decks. She's not quite as flexible as she was before, but she is incredibly strong with the bounce archetype and specifically with collector. I think this presents a pretty good shift in the bounce archetype style. And now we can look for low impact cards with the addition of hit monkey since, since bounce kind of start started originating. We can now drop the, the Hawk. You can still run that package, but Hitmonkey is just about as explosive and you can focus your lower cost cards and positioning them where you need them on the last turn. You have that big explosion of power to find a way to overpower your opponent. The rest of the deck is just looking at adding a little disruption to your opponent and your Iceman, having multiple ways to pull cards back in with your Falcon, your Beast, and Kitty Pride working wonderfully with Collector is beautiful. I expect to see a Kitty Pride all over the place. I don't know that this is necessarily the absolute best shell, but it is a good starting place for the next couple of days, especially since she is now free for everybody. Definitely check this one out. It is going to offer so much explosion, so much flexibility. And I've been having a blast now that Kitty Pride is back. And I hope that you check her out as well because she is phenomenal. She really helps solidify the bounce archetype and collector just as a whole. And so we're going to go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right. First up, we have Galios. Uh, the first location is Ministry's Lab, and we do get <laughs> we get Kitty Pride in our starting hand, which is beautiful. Um, I do want to play it, but I also want to get Bast on the board. That way it starts at three. Next turn, we can do both Kitty Pride and Iceman. Uh, we can throw Bishop onto the board eventually, maybe on turn four. Oh, they're using the return of Kitty Pride. And with the, with the patch notes, I feel like they <laughs> disrupted... Uh, some of the more common uh, uh, deck archetypes, some of the top tier ones that did pretty well. Uh, so we have the Death Wave and the Doom Wave, both of which were incredibly consistent and potent. Uh, now they're gone. And, and so we're going to have to navigate in this new normal. Uh, so Icebox hits our beast, unfortunately, or else we could have had a free Kitty Pride. But uh, we do get Collector, which is going to be huge. Uh, we're going to go ahead and snap into it. We have Collector. That's going to buff. Kitty Pride now interacts correctly with the Collector. And her new effect is she automatically returns at the start of each hand. Or she returns to your hand at the start of each turn. Um, and so you don't have to decide if you manually want to pull her. Now this does make it a little bit more restrictive on decks that want to use some of her. Want to use her as like a tempo drop. And then shift into a 6 cost on the last turn. Because now she's going to be forced into your hand. The only way that that's going to be functional now is if we also hit it with like a beast to reduce its cost, which is going to be l much less consistent. Um, so we do have Angela now, so we can continue to like hit that lane. Uh, but I think we do Bishop and then Kitty Pride. <laughs> oh no, Kitty Pride is going to be everywhere, you guys. Uh, I think this really is what slingshots bounce back into the meta. Wait. Why are they using Kitty Pride with Electro? They're not going to Galactus us, are they? Oh, if they Galactus us, I'm going to be so sad. 
I'm galactose intolerant. All right, let's... Uh... We're going to do hood. Um, it may get destroyed in danger room. Ooh, they could also do Sandman. I'm, I'm worried about a Galactus, but this could be Sandman. Sandman could be the, the play that they go with. Um, all right, let's do this. We're going to opt to not uh, pick up our cards. If this is Galactus, joke's on me. If it's Sandman, then this is probably the proper play. Giving us the option to drop our Kitty Pride on the last turn. It is Galactus. Gosh, dang. What are you doing with Kitty Pride in your Galactus deck, man? Oh, no. Well, I guess really not the worst. Like, it's going to pull her Kitty Pride back in. We have initiative. So they could Shang-Chi plus Kitty Pride. But all of this is really, really tall. Bishop's going to be eight, so just under that range. Collector's under the range. Angel is going to be under the range. Uh, Galli I, I'm curious. I'm going to see it out because I am just that curious uh, what you're running, what your end game is here. Because uh, I don't think death is cheap enough. Uh, and if it is, I don't think it's powerful enough to overcome the, the Kitty Pride. Your Kitty Pride is... You bounced it a couple of times, but I still don't think it's where it needs to be. And we do end up getting the retreat. Uh, so Kitty Pride... I Ah, uh, Galio... Uh, Galois? Sorry, I think I was calling you Galio like League of Legends. Uh, Galois was was testing out some kind of new spicy build. We'll see if it works out. But this time we're going to take the two cubes and jump over into the next one. <laughs> All right. Next up we have Heavy. And I fully expect to see Kitty Pride everywhere. Uh, she was one of those cards that was incredibly impactful for the like 48 hours that she was here. And then she, <laughs> she got absolutely derailed for like a month and a half. And now everybody has access to her. And so definitely everybody wants to check it out. Um, Kitty Pride is going to be one of those, those top tier cards. It's going to be really hard to hit it with a Killmonger um, in some regards because it will return to your hand. So you don't have to play it every single time. And in certain decks, it can help you lose initiative as well. So they now have Bast. Uh, they played Bast second. We played Bast first. That way Kitty Pride got a little bit bigger than what theirs was. And uh, we have it planted firmly in Death's Domain. We're also going to be able to do Kitty Pride plus Beast here, which is going to make our Kitty Pride free every single turn from here on out. Now, I do like the idea of doing Bishop this turn, but I like the idea of a free Kitty Pride even better. And so now that they fix this interaction, Beast is going to bounce her back in. Since they have changed her text, she now still retains, she now still gets a plus two bonus and she retains that zero cost. So where it was really glitchy, really buggy before, it is now uh, so much better. Now, the only thing that this does is it really corrals her into a like bounce archetype style card um, or just a lower curve card. So you can always do this with like a moon girl and a hit monkey zoo. And I think it'd be in, I think it'd be pretty impactful as well. Let's go ahead and do the bishop. Uh, we're going to do our kitty pride. We do have hit monkey, so we can put a fake Mysterio here, uh, a fake one here. Uh, we can do a, a decently sized uh, hit monkey over here. And I think we win Death's Domain. So it's going to come down to a point differential. Um, and I think this is just, I I think we have a clear cut in here. So our Kitty Pride is a little bit better than theirs. And ooh, so they bounce their hood. So they do get another demon token. Or they will get another demon. And they can use the negative powered one in Death's Domain. Interesting. Okay. I don't want to do Falcon. Uh, Falcon is one of those that I, I don't want to drop. Our deck tracker is broken, so I don't know what's left in our deck. Oh, no. Um, I'm sure it'll be fixed here in just a minute. Untaps deck trackers uh, with the change of how the decks are displayed. I'm guessing it broke the, the display. Um, we're going to save this. We're going to do Mysterio plus Hitmonkey plus Kitty Pride on the last turn to really explode a lot of power into Xandar. Now, they do play a couple of cards in Rickety Bridge. I assume that they're not going to be able to change it. Maybe they have an armor, but for a bounce deck, I really, I really doubt it. Um, their Kitty Pride is just constantly just a tiny bit less than what ours is. Uh, so they return the Bast. They return uh, a couple of other cards. And now the Rickety Bridge is there. Death's Domain is just so strong. 
um, having the having the card planted in Death's Domain. Okay, so let's go the one. So that makes this two. Uh, this is going to make it three, four. This is going to make it a six power hit monkey. So it's going to be better than if we just played Mysterio there. We also don't want to do Falcon because that'll pull back in our Bast. And so we should do this. Uh, Bishop gets relatively large. Now, maybe they have the Iron Man version. Iron Man version is the only one that kind of sneaks up on this, but it is more susceptible to non-mirror match cases. So like if they have a super scroll, if they can steal that Iron Man in some way, shape or form, uh, but we just have the reach with Hitmonkey. So I think we're okay. We're gonna tell ourselves we're okay. They do flood a lot of cards. I'm hoping they don't have a way to change this one. Um, and if they do, I guess it still comes down to a point differential. Um, so we should be okay. It looks like they probably have Hitmonkey as well. Shang-Chi would be difficult. It doesn't look like it's going to be in the Iron Man. So the Kitty Pride comes down. The Hood comes down. What else you got? I know you have a Demon token somewhere to buff up your Bishop. You have the Bass, which is which is fine. It's perfectly fine. Collector. Your Collector came down a bit too late, it looks like. Uh, ours, we, ours is left in our deck somewhere. So we didn't even draw the Collector. But it is much more impactful. Uh, with this new change. So it's going to come down to a one point change. We win right by one. We win mid by one. And that is, and they may have, Heavy may have top decked, it may have top decked Bast on turn two. But us having Bast on turn one gave us that one extra power, which is what allowed us to, to stay in the lead here. Uh, when it all boils down, it's just, wow. That was incredibly close. This deck is going to be everywhere. I expect a rise in Killmonger. I expect a rise in Killmonger and a rise again and maybe Sandman if it can hang in there. I don't know if it can I don't know if it can hold up against everything that this deck is going to be able to bring, but I do expect those two to start raising in popularity. Now that Wave is gone, we don't have to worry about Wave in regards to this deck as often, just really in Galactus list. Let's go ahead and take the two cubes. We'll jump over into the next one. All right. Next up we have Jay Bird 15 start with the pride again this is three games in a row we don't this is three games in a row we do have chavez for that consistency driver uh just because it's going to be so important to get some of these and then bar sinister so what we can do is we can <laughs> oh no well we're gonna be able to play hood we'll play kitty pride we'll be able to beast bounce kitty pride back in she's gonna be free so then we can play her into Bar Sinister and then, oh no, oh my gosh, this is, okay, we're going to let this play out a little bit because this is really exciting. <laughs> oh no. We're going to have four free Kitty Prize to play every single turn of the game. Now, a Sandman would be so detrimental here, uh, but otherwise this is going to be massive. Um, as long as they don't block us here, they could potentially block us. Ooh, and Los Diablos base could destroy Bar Sinister. Ooh. This just in. That's unfortunate. Now we could do this, right? One, two, three. Do three, and then we bounce it back in. That way, if this gets destroyed, it's fine. Now let's play it normal. We're not going to rush. We're not going to worry. Four, five, six, seven. We're going to play it normal. We're going to play it cool. We're going to play it calm, casual. They, they do a Moon Knight, which discard, <laughs> discards their Falcon, uh, which they got from the Daily Bugle, and then everything else that we own. But luckily, our Kitty Pride is on the board and unrevealed at this time. So if Los Diablos space changes, that's fine. They get rid of a lot of their cards, um, which is massive. Huge props to you. They did miss the Lady Sif that they ended up giving us, unfortunately. But everything else is fine. The ruins are ruined. That's That's okay. I'm a little bit sad about it, but it's okay. Let's go the free hood. We're going to do Kitty Pride into the ruins. That's going to allow us to just buff it up every turn. That Moon Knight was so big. Into the Ghost Rider. You discarded so many cards, bro. No, Jaybird 115. How are you going to do us this dirty? Oh, this hurts so bad. All right, so... Let's, 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 let's cry. That's all we can do right now is we're just going to cry. All right. So if we do something like this, this is going to be four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Uh, eight and six is going to be 14, so we don't even need to play the Lady Sif there. We can do the Lady Sif here. And then we have the option to do our Kitty Pride in either lane. It's free plus the Chavez. This is going to be ugly, but we might be able to might be able to pull this one out. Um, just how rude. Uh, the, <laughs> the Ghost Rider was wild. So both of their cards in their hand are six cost. The Iceman tried to trigger, but it didn't have any targets. So all of them are already six cost. We have the 10 power Kitty Pride. We have the uh, nine power Chavez to try to, uh, to try to outpower and just, just raw outpower what they have. It does look like we put it, should have played Lady Sif into mid to get that extra reach. Make sure we won this one. Oh no. Let's do something like this. We're gonna break the point differential here. We get an extra plus two from the Angela for playing here. So if it comes down to a true tiebreaker somewhere. Oh wait, this wouldn't win this lane. All right, we're gonna stack in Daily Bugle and just, we're gonna stack and hope. Um, It's not very likely. I, oh wait, the Infinite is, oh wait, we, we lose the point differential, right? Oh no, had we played the Lady Sif into the ruins, we would have been fine. Daybird 15, Daybird 115, that was mean, mean. We'll take the eight cube loss, it's it's gonna happen sometimes. This was such a good play, the, the Moon Knight was a good play. Uh, the Ghost Rider resummoning the death was huge, considering how many duds had been discarded, uh, and then the Infinite was good as well. We'll take it, I don't like it, but we'll take it. Let's jump over into the next one. Oh, right, next up we have Tree. We get Kitty Pride in our opening hand again, which is huge. Huge, uh, such huge value. As long as we don't have someone come around and sneak up with like a Moon Knight and just absolutely kamikaze destroy us, um, which you know if they do, that's fine, I guess. Let's go ahead and do Kitty Pride again. Uh, we want to use and prioritize her as often as possible. Now we do have Chavez for that consistency driver, but this is still kind of uh, kind of uh, kind of absurd how strong how strong this is. All right, let's we're going for it <laughs> we're going for it we're gonna have the kitty pride and cloning bats and just be able to play so many kitty prides that's not our pride talking i don't think we won't draw next turn if we play this line but that's honestly fine right yeah that's fine we're fine with this uh actually oh, rude rude green goblin player rude so the Daredevil, the Green Goblin, this is either a Junk deck, a Professor X Lock deck, uh, something similar. And so what we can do, we can actually block this lane. Uh, they're not going to be able to do another Green Goblin here, which is good. Because they reveal first, Kitty Pride is acting as kind of that buffer to make sure that this can't get blocked. Um, and then this, she's going to return back to our hand. Actually, she won't, will she? Four, five, six. One will, the other one will stay because we're not going to have enough space but I do think we need to protect the cloning bats. Um, and that's why we're gonna rush those two cards there. Uh, so Jeff, Jeff is good. Jeff is good to be copied. The Titania is not gonna be able to bounce back and forth. So we can more consistently control how that's how and where that's gonna go. And so we <laughs> have so many kitty brides. Oh, I wish they were, I wish they were beasted. Uh, I wish they were beast bounced. All right, let's go kitty pride. They can't. They can't do a Professor X here, so we don't really need to worry about that location too heavily. All right, so we're going <laughs> to... This looks absurd. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the Hit Monkey here. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to get one space, and then we'll be able to pull some of these back in. The Hit Monkey, we're going to copy after it after it hits with all of our Kitty Prides. And so I expect, I expect a retreat pretty soon. Um, but they've already accepted the snap, so at this point, there's no harm locking in one more turn. We know that we're protected from the Professor X play wherever it goes. This is an absurd amount of power. This is an, is an absurd amount of power. I am curious how it interacts with Professor X. That's one that I haven't seen. I assume that Kitty Pride gets locked into the Professor X lane. Um, and so this one, the Daredevil is a telltale sign, plus the Jeff is a telltale sign that they have Professor X somewhere. Uh, Isle of Silence is just being our, being our bro. Otherwise, we would have spread it out a little bit further than what we did. All right, so two car. Ooh, the Spider-Man lock is big. Okay, um, I was 
I would that's not what we were hoping for. But we do have a pretty sizable power advantage in all of our other lanes. And so we can pull in hopefully the, the Kitty Pride here pulls in. Okay, it does. It goes in order of play, which is massive. Uh such a huge benefit. Then we draw into the rest of our Kitty Prides. We do drop initiative off of that, so we don't have to worry about a <laughs> we don't have to worry about a Killmonger play. We don't really have to worry about a Shang-Chi either because both of these are below that Killmonger range and then we can just lock in and we do get the retreat. Kitty Kitty Pride is nuts. Kitty Pride in like Sinister London and cloning that uh, if it gets hit with Beast is just going to be absurd. Uh, we will absolutely take it. And with it bouncing and continuing to bounce, we were able to maintain not having initiative on the last turn. So the Killmonger would have been tough to navigate even if they had it. I doubt they did, but even if they did, and so we're going to go ahead and take the two cubes. Let's jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have basic. Uh, the first location is Machine World. We have our Bast. We don't have Kitty Pride, but basically it was it was uh, it was happening far too often. So we're OK with that. I don't want to do Iceman first here just to add that early, early, early disruption for him. Go ahead and do it. We're going to do the Iceman, hopefully hit one of their key plays and then they have to end up retreating. The Washington DC is going to be great if we draw into our hood eventually. Let's go ahead and do our Bast. We're, gonna, we're just doing our Bast here. We're just doing our Bast here. That's all we can do. Can't give any more than your absolute Bast. Okay, we're going <laughs> to... They played Yondu. Hits our Falcon. Okay. That's not terrible. This That could mean that this is a Galactus list. The Kiln is interesting. So let's go ahead and do... Hood. We're gonna beast bounce these back in. We could beast bounce our fa our, our hit monkey eventually, but I I like the idea of beasting these back in. We can then do uh, Bast one more time. We can do Iceman one more time. We can add uh, as much disruption as humanly possible. And try to overcome a potential Galactus play. So they haven't ramp. I think we're okay in that regard. Let's do. Angela, Bast, Iceman. We're going to see if that's enough. Uh, they skipped on the last turn, so we we don't know exactly how much power it's going to be. But, oh, we should have done Demon. What am I thinking? Oh, no. For the ba Oh, no. The Bast set it to three instead of six. Oh, oh. I'm so disappointed in myself. <laughs> All right, let's do let's do this. We'll get another we'll get another Demon. Um, a, a, a full size demon, not the not the half pint. Unless they can really impact this lane positively, I think we should be okay. And the She Hulk after the Yondu I, is kind of wild. I'm not sure what kind of deck Basic is running. They're probably brewing up something. So I, I expect to see a lot less uh, net decking for for a little while, at least until we can kind of break down the meta a little bit further. Okay. So this is the death wave. No way is basic still trying to run the standard death wave. Uh, maybe they're just running death now. Maybe that's what it is. It's just a, a death a death deck. Um, because death wave is not 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 it. They've destroyed two three cards, including Yondu. So death is now eight. That brings it down to five. They could do a death. But then they would lose one of these other ones. So I think what they're gonna do is do a Doctor Doom. That'll be five, six, seven, eight, but that's not enough here either. All right, I think we're okay. We're just gonna, we're just gonna vomit stuff on the board. The fake Mysterio token here will get the extra plus three from the Washington DC lane. And so I'm not gonna snap at this point, but I think we very, very heavily have this one locked in. Even if they have the, even if they have the Doctor Doom, I don't think there's anything they can, they can do to stop, uh, stop the power train. It is the Doctor Doom. So they do win Kiln. But they lose the other two in the process. And we'll absolutely take it. We will take the two cubes. Let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and jump over into one more. All right. Next up, we have Switchblade. Uh, the first location is Stark Tower, which is decent for us. Uh, we can get some extra power on our cards and then maybe pull them back in. Um, actually, if they're there, they're going to stay. Yondu hits our beast. So we're not going to be able to bounce these back in anything other than nice anything other than our one costs we won't be able to pull back into our deck into our hand which is fine 
Um, with the collector, we did get Kitty Pride, so huge value there. Let's do Bast, and then we're gonna go ahead and jump right in with the Falcon play. Um, now, we are relatively safe from a Galactus because of Dark Dimension. And so if they're wanting to do Galactus, we know that it has to be done in Asgard. Um, and so it should be that that lane is clear up through turn four, so we get the additional draw. Uh, they do have Electro now. So I'm wondering if they go away from the Galactus play or if they stick with it. Guess we'll see. Let's go Kitty Pride. We're gonna go Iceman as well. And all that we can hope for is that the constant disruption is enough to hit one of their key cards so that they can't continue to play it. That's that's our biggest hope. That's all we can hope for here. <laughs> uh, let's go with Bast. We have the Iceman for the disruption. We have the Kitty Pride that will pull back in, helping buff up our collector. And then we'll be able to kind of go from there. Um, uh, we set our bishop directly to three. They have a Shang-Chi that they play. Interesting. Okay. We have already played our Falcon, so the hood becomes less impactful now. They can do Galactus. I think we're going to do this. I think we're going to do hood in the left lane. We're going to do... Uh, that will help buff our collector just a touch. We're going to do Kitty Pride that way. If they do Galactus, it pulls it back in. We can play it again. We will have initiative, but they're not going to destroy very many cards because if Stark Tower doesn't go off, this is going to be seven plus two. It's going to be nine total power that is destroyed for a null, and that's not going to be very big for Rome at all. Uh, so we do have the hood that helps buff up our, and it is Galactus. And so depending on what kind of Galactus play they're going with here, there are six cards destroyed, so now death is two. Um, so they could do that along with a couple of other cards. But a, a null is only going to be nine power. And so null being six, I doubt that that is what they want to utilize. We know that they've already played their Shang-Chi, so we could lean in on a Chavez. And we are able to hold it down versus the Galactus play. Uh, just by putting them in a little bit tricky of a spot, not having very many cards that are left on the board to get destroyed buffing up a potential null play. We would have been able to outpower the null when it came down. And so we are gonna go ahead and end the video here. This probably isn't the most optimal Kitty Pride list, but it is a very good use case for Collector, for Kitty Pride, for all of your bounce components. And you're gonna get so much value uh, out of that Kitty Pride package that unless the opponent has a direct way to counter or disrupt it, that plus the Hit Monkey is going to be insanely, absurdly strong. And so I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like and a comment down below. This patch was wild. Shaking up the wave that much is still blowing my mind. What do you guys think of the patch? What do you guys think of the update? Is there anything that you're trying out that you've had some pretty decent success with? If so, let me know in the comment section down below. As always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.